ओम समस्त जन कल्याणी निरतं करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव तद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेव सुत कंसचानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु मेव माता च पिता बंधु सखात्मे विद्याद्रविड़मेवेवेव गुरुदेव देव हरि ओम एवरीथिंग इज ओके हियर वी आर डूइंग द एनालिसिस ऑफ ब्रह्मन नेचर ऑफ ब्रह्मन एंड द ब्रह्मन इज निरस्थ माया कृत सर्वेदम नित्यम ध्रुवम निष्कल अप्रमेय अरूपम अव्यक्तमनाख्यमव्यय ज्योति स्वयं किंचिदिदम च कास्ती इस द श्लोक टू फोर्टी वी डी सो निरस्थ माया कृत सर्वेदम ऑल भेदा दट मीन सजाति विजाति स्वगत भेदा दट आर् क्रिएटेड बै दि माया is nirasta by devoid of or not having any differences of thing because brahman is pure existence and in the existence there is no different no sajati vijati bigata sveva that's how the upanishad says ekameva advitiyam and shankaracharya interprets that there is no sajati because sajati means a species of the same if there is a chair this chair is different from that chair and so on that's called sajati bhedas there is only one brahman brahman being infinite there cannot be many brahmans therefore this infinite cannot be have any other jati because there is no species of brahmans there and vijati vijati is that which is different from one jati that is chairs are different from table tables are different from carpets and so on they are different jatis and that kind of difference is also not there because it's one without any second and therefore and there are also no swagata beda there are no internal differences this way acharyas differ where shankara acharya says it is there are no internal differences and logically it cannot have internal differences because it is brahman that means infinite infinite cannot have finite things inside finite plus finites cannot be infinite and therefore it is pure existence alone and whereas the uh, the bhagwan ramanuja interprets that it has an internal differences and the internal differences constituting the body of the of the brahman and they are called jivas and jagat and jivas are anupramana only of the size of anu and jagat is the whole universe and both are viseshanas of the total brahman that's how he interprets the brahman as having the swagata vedas here this nirastha maya krutha sarva bhedam it has no difference of any kind and once you negate it it, it is nityam that which is eternal that means which is changeless in the if you have something inside the finites undergo continuously change therefore jivas undergo modification jagat undergo modification and if they are constituents of the total brahman then brahman also undergoing modification because it components are undergoing modification but it is infinite since there are no differences of any kind it has to be nityam so it is eternal dhruvam that which is unchanging and nishkalam so there is no impurity of any kind impurity is something other than itself is being deposited we call it an impurity and we can wash it off or clean it off by some process but there is nothing other than brahman therefore it is nishkalam aprameyam so it is not an object of knowledge so brahman is unknowable because anything i know is different from the knower known distinctions are there it's not an object only i can know i cannot know this object also so i cannot know myself and i cannot know brahman both are unknowable why brahman being infinite and in infinite there cannot be no other known distinctions and therefore it cannot be known and it cannot be meditated also 
Some people say, I want to sit and meditation. On what? Aham Brahma Asmi. I am Brahman. So how can I meditate? Neither I can meditate on the self that I am, nor I can meditate on the Brahman. Because self that I am is a subject who is a meditator, not a meditated. So I cannot meditate on myself, nor I can meditate on Brahman, Brahman being infinite. So how can you divide something which is indivisible? Aham Jata Param Jayam Akhandam Khandate Kadam. Dattatraya says in the Avadhuta Gita, says I want to meditate. What? what? How can you meditate on Brahman? Because I can never meditate on something which is of the same nature of infinite. So the very notion that I have to meditate on it itself is a problem. So now what should I do? Okay, now meditate after listening to the scriptures, srotavyaha, mantavyaha, after clear understanding it, understanding it, then jasanam, then meditate. On what? Not on Brahman, but recognition that what I have learned through Vedanta is that which is being pointed out by Lakshartha, I had to meditate on the scriptural statement, what it pointing out and see the truth and claim myself I am that Brahman. I'm not meditating on Brahman, I'm meditating on the self that I am to the degree that I am the total by negating all misconceptions about myself. That's why it's called Aparocha Jnanam. So this is Abrameyam. So it is unknowable. So Brahman is not knowable. So I want to know Brahman. For that only Vedanta is a Pramana. So how can Vedanta becomes a Pramana which cannot be known by any means? So Vedanta is a Pramana not to know Brahman but to remove your misconceptions about yourself and the Brahman and the world. So one has to be clear. So therefore Vedanta is a Pramana. It removes through knowledge all our misconceptions which are due to the not knowing ourselves. So avidya janita, all the the all misconceptions, misunderstandings that are coming due to the not knowing the truth. So therefore, by pointing out the truth in the direction, I have to eliminate all the the misconceptions in the mind, and in the process, the mind is free from all the misconceptions. And in the process, I recognize reanalyze the called self realization reanalyzing my true nature and i what i think i was i am what i think i am is not really what i am but i am pure that which cannot be thought of as an object but very subject which is infinite so it is therefore aprameyam. So the pramana, the Vedanta becomes a pramana. It's only through lakshartha. It is pointing in the direction that I had to contemplate using the Vedanta as a means of knowledge for me to claim myself aham brahmasmi. Not that I'm going to become Brahman or I want to see Brahman. I want to meditate on Brahman. None of them are really true. What I'm meditating is on the scriptural statement as it is pointing in the direction I also meditate in that direction using the scriptures where the truth has to be self-revealing because it's always there present even the very meditator is the one who is trying to meditate is the very truth itself so the search for the truth is the seeker himself is the thought so if, I, if a seeker thinks their thought is different from a seeker, then there's a confusion because he will never find it because he's searching for where there is no truth. This is true because I'm searching for happiness everywhere, no, not knowing or even knowing that there is no happiness out there, I'm still searching for it. So this is deep rooted avidya. Because even though I understand that there is no happiness in the object, still I am going after the happiness because this has become so deep rooted that it has become a bondage for me that I cannot get rid of easily. Those vasanas are get rid, not cannot be got rid of. Therefore, I had to remove the, all the wrong notions for that only the purification of the mind, all that is prescribed in order to see that I don't depend upon anything 
other than myself for my happiness because I am longing for happiness without recognizing I am the very source of happiness and that is what is called the knowledge here. So Aprameyam so, and Arupam Avyaktam Anakyam Avyayam. So these are the statements that are pointing out which cannot be pointed. This is Arupam. So any Rupam, Rupam means a form, cannot be that. So if you are seeing something or looking for something, therefore whatever you see cannot be that. Say I have realized on that day, it cannot be. I have understood it, it cannot be. So in the Kirana Upanishad, after the teaching is over, the student understood in a way, at the same time he wants to say it, at the same time he has a problem to say it, he says I understand it. And then he recognizes it's not an object to understand. It's not like science, I understand chemistry, I understand physics, so I understand Brahman also. It's not of that type. It is Aham Brahmasmi. It's not knowing Brahman, it is recognition that I am Brahman. So having realized that, then he corrects himself, not that I, I, I don't really understand it as an understanding, but I understand uh, the fact that I am that. So he's trying to use the words that are, we are familiar, I understand it, no, no, I don't understand it, no, 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 that doesn't also is correct, is not correct, I understand it clearly that Aham Brahmasmi. So that confusion is only because it's not an object for me to understand, it is Arupam. So, avyaktam, so it cannot be expressed. Anything that is vyaktam, that is anything manifestation, cannot be that. So, even Saguna Brahma, Ishwara, that we, I can meditate on Saguna, Saguna Upasana, through Saguna Upasana, I can meditate on Ishwara, and Ishwara can even appear to me. When he appears to me, he will only appear to me and not to anybody because they have not done the upasana. So when I talk to him, I'll be talking, but he will be talking. I only can listen to him, but no one else. Other people think that I have gone mad because I'm only talking myself. Nowadays it may not be because everybody is talking with cell phone on, keep on talking without they are talking to themselves, but apparently they have a cell phone. So the God phone that you are, you may be able to see the God and listen to the God and talk to God, but that's all within the Vyavahara only. Because from the point of absolute, even if the Lord comes down here, he has to teach, go to teacher and learn Vedanta. So, Tadviddi Pranipatena Pariprasnena Sevaya. So, if he can, if by seeing Lord, if you understood everything, Arjuna have been seeing Lord all the time. Even after. So we we'll resume after internet breaking here. So the student after Arjuna, after seeing the Vishwarupa, he still asked the questions and only in the 13th chapter, the Mahavakya has been taught there, where Kshetragyam Chapimam Biddhi Sarvashetreshu Bharata, where Kshetragya is the Jiva from the where who is the knower of Kshetram, is none other than Aam, that means the knower of all Kshetras, that is all pervading Ishvara. So Jiva Ishvara, Jiva Ishvara Aikyatvam is taught through the Kshetragyam Chapimam Biddhi Sarvashetreshu Bharata, in all fields, the knower is only one. And that being pointed out, so in spite of seeing the, the Vishwarupam, still knowledge is required. So knowledge alone liberates, not something that one can see or one can hear. So Arupam Avyaktam, so it is unmanifested. So Vishwarupam is a manifested form and any manifestation is only in terms of through Maya Shakti, that is through the, the Vyavaharika Satyam and avyaktam, anakhyam, and that which is non-unnameable non, un, un, also, av, avyayam, that which is inexhaustible, so essentially it's being infinite. Even the word infinite is not a name for infinite, it says it's not finite. So anything finite has to be rejected as not Brahman. Brahman itself means the, the infiniteness and it is not the empty, which is without any or sunyam, 
or nothing there because there is no, existence is not nothing it is something which exists nothing is non existence and it is existence itself but it is of the nature of consciousness and that's where the vedanta comes into picture it says it is prajnanam brahma the consciousness is infinite and consciousness is swayam jyotihi so it is self conscious and therefore it is because of which everything else it is the light of all lights so jyoti here has to be understood as that which illumines is jyoti so jyoti is that which is not needed a, a self luminous and at the same time it illumines everything else so tasya bhasa sarvavidam vibhati so because of that light only everything is seen so if i know something so how do i know so i know i can see through pramanas so i am a knower and everything is known so how do i know i know myself i know myself because i i am self effulgent and that means i shine myself i don't need another means of knowledge to know myself because i am aprameyam but at the same time i am self revealing also i don't need anything but i am no i am that's why we give example when you are in a deep in a in a pitch dark room say are you there you say are you there say yes i am so how do you know when you can't say anything how do you know you are there so i don't need to see myself to know that i am there because i am self effulgent therefore i don't need another battery light to see if there is a light burning or not or i don't need a battery to see if the sun is there or not so when the sun is there is self shining and because of the sun only everything is shining back so this whole it is jyoti and even the shining shining sun is also known because i am the jyoti that even lights the sun so what do you mean by lighting the sun because of that consciousness illumining illumining the object sun also so that i know there is a sun out there if i if i am not conscious then even if the sun is outside there may not be knowledge that there is a sun out there for that i need an instrument mind and also backed up by consciousness that i am which illumines the mind and any object thought that arises in the mind so it is jyotihi and swayam jyotihi it is self shining therefore it is aprameyam it is not an object of knowledge but how do i know you don't need to worry about it because it's a self jyoti that means it's shining itself self for it self revealing so when i entered into the room is a candle is burning so how do i know the candle is burning as soon as you enter the room you know that candle is burning because there is a light already it is shining and it is illumining itself and illumining the surroundings also because of that light only you can see everything which you don't need a light to see the light but in its light everything is known so if i know everything or if i know anything recognize it is because of the consciousness that is illumining everything that i know so in every knowledge consciousness has to be there and therefore the recognition you know is required that i am the conscious entity that is swayam jyotihi and kinchididam chakasti so idam kinchit chakasti so everything that i see is being illumined because of that and for essentially tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati from the upanishad says natatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam nema vidyuto banti kutoya magnihi tameva bhanta manubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati so i don't need a sunlight natatra suryo bhati i don't need the sunlight or the moonlight or the light of the stars or even light of the electricity vidyut also is not required but what is required is essentially it is self revealing and i don't need even a light this is a arati statement in the vedic arati where they chant this saying showing the arati with the with the with the karpuram and in that you see the lord but saying that i don't need even this light also because you are the light of all lights and in your light only i may, i am able to see so what is the symbolism of karpuram burning karpuram is stands for vasana so in the burning of the vasana when the mind is gets purified i cannot but see provided i have a 
education or the knowledge of what the reality is through Vedanta Shravanam. So I need the background knowledge to know what it is and knowing very well, immediately I can recognize that. And that's what has to be understood in the process here. So Jyotihi Swayam Kinchid Idam Chakasti. So Idam Chakasti, the everything that is being shine, Idam, all this is illumined here, means Chakasti means shining, that everything is shining means everything is known because of the consciousness that is enlivening ever through the mind and throwing the light off because of which I can know this, 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 this. So without my presence, the Idam, the object cannot be known or established. If I don't know, then I cannot say it is there or not. So I had to be there to start with and I had to perceive the object or interact with the object through a pramana and then only I can say, yes, there is an object there. And if I don't say it or if I cannot say it or if I cannot perceive it or if I cannot know through the process, then the existence of the object I said is indeterminate whether it is there or not we cannot say some conscious entity has to say that there is an object here inner entity because inner entity is not swayam jyoti it doesn't shine itself only existence is being expressed there of brahman not the consciousness because the instrument for expressing the consciousness is not there in the inner the subtle body is not there only sthula sariram is there in the sthula sariram the, it, it cannot express the consciousness. So I am able to express through this body consciousness only because the subtle body is there inside and that subtle body enlivens and that is a subtle body that makes even the gross body to even to say that I know or I don't know there is a God, there is no God. All that I am able to deny the existence of the God because of the subtle body which is itself is activated by the God itself. So one who denies the existence of the God is proving himself the existence of the God in a way. That's what is like shouting, I don't have tongue to speak. The very shouting itself proves that he has a tongue to speak. So I cannot deny myself. Only thing is, I do not know what the God really means. And therefore I am denying my misconceptions about the God and say there is no God. All those things have to be understood. That's why Vedanta becomes a Pramana here. Jyoti Swayam Kinchididam Chakasti. And we go into more details in the next sloka. And then afterwards the, the Mahavakya Vichara. With this we stop here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om